Why does a game lose relevancy so fast? For starters, I would like to begin with everyone's favourite Mafia game back in 2020, Among Us. In a time where we were all forced to remain in our homes and find an activity to pass the time, a lot of people gravitated towards an up-and-coming game that was taking both Twitch and YouTube by storm. With its easy-to-understand gameplay, intense moments, and overall wholesome appeal, Among Us was the game that even your grandma was learning about. A whodunit type game was the perfect recipe for a party game at the time, especially for how accessible it was. Being both on mobile and PC with crossplay, meaning even if your friends didn't have a PC, they could still play with you. The game consisted of one to two imposters and the rest of the players being crewmates. The crewmates would have to complete various tasks around the map and the imposters would have to go around unaliving everyone without getting caught. The number one thing that made this game so fun though was when it came time to discuss in a meeting. Once a meeting was called, either by finding a dead body or hitting the emergency meeting button, all players would have to discuss what they did that round and start piecing clues together to find out who the imposters were. And nothing felt better than either being the imposter and coming up with these amazing strategies to throw everyone off, or being a crewmate and becoming a full-on detective. And no matter what side you were on, it was always intense and always keeping you on the edge of your seat. Even just watching others play this game was addicting. I remember watching Corpse be terrifying as an imposter, disguised Tulse being in incredibly calculating with every move he made. Or one of my favourite creators, Tio, being incredibly fun and chaotic with his group of friends. The game just felt perfect. In fact, everyone was playing Among Us, and it got to the point where it reached the mainstream media because a whole culture was formed around this game, with jokes being made, such as Red always being the imposter, Card Swipe being the most annoying task in the game, the classic I saw this person vent meme that spiralled all over the internet, even the character designs becoming some of the most recognised thing on the internet at the time. And even now, pretty much everyone knows about Among Us. Merch was released, tournaments were held, and some people's careers have took off by playing Among Us. Even Jimmy Fallon got together a group of popular icons to play the game, and that just shows how big Among Us was. If a talk show host is getting the cast of Stranger Things and streamers to play Among Us, you know the game was pretty big at the time. It makes complete sense why it was so big. Like I said earlier, we were all stuck in our homes, thanks to the pandemic. And it was the perfect perfect party game to play with just about anyone. So why then? Why has it lost so much relevancy? I mean, of course, games do become stale over time, but Among Us games always felt different each time you played, and you could always play with different groups of people for different interactions, and yet the game has fallen off. It's certainly not a dead game. I mean, it still has a player base, but compared to the numbers it used to have, a lot of people would class it as no longer relevant. I think there are a few reasons why Among Us fell off. For starters, everyone's biggest gripe with the game was the lack of new content, with the dev team at the time only consisting of very few members. It's obvious why they were so slow, with rolling out updates and new content for the game. When the game did begin blowing up, it had a total of three playable maps and a fourth map named the Airship wouldn't be released until March 31st of 2021, which is when the game's hype began dying down. Again, I can't blame the dev team for this. There were very few of them and they wanted to make sure to release maps when they were fully ready. Not to mention the game also blew up very quickly all of a sudden, so they had to keep up with the rapid growth of the game at the time. Since then, a fifth map has been released called The Fungal, which was released on October October 24th, 2023, which is over two years for another map. Even now, I do think they're a little slow with new content, which I would say is probably still hurting their game a little bit. As I said, without new content, the game would become stale over time for people. It happens with every game eventually. A great example of a game doing the opposite though of this is Fortnite, as they've managed to keep players on their game years later. But then again, they're always adding new content and have implemented new modes into the game that completely switch up from the classic Battle Royale that they were known for. But then again, Fortnite has epic games behind it, which for sure has a lot of devs and manpower for development on new content. I think the second reason why Among Us lost relevancy lies with its player base. That's right, it's not just the devs fault. The game was great when you had a group of friends to play with, but that's if you could get a group of friends to play with. If you didn't, then your only options were to join public lobbies, which was a gamble because a lot of the time a random player could just say that you were the imposter and everyone would vote you out before you could get a word in. Making some public lobbies incredibly 
incredibly unplayable. Or you could join dedicated Discord servers for Among Us lobbies, which could also be a gamble as some of these servers were filled with incredibly toxic individuals, making it a miserable experience. Over time, Among Us would lose its hype. As I said before as well, I believe one of the main reasons why the game took off was because everyone was stuck at home and Among Us offered the perfect game to play while she jumped on a Zoom call or Discord call with some friends. Other than that, I believe it was big streamers and content creators that were pushing the game's popularity up. And once those streamers and creators started getting bored of the game, it just started to lose its hype. It was genuinely heartbreaking seeing this game lose relevancy over time. I remember being a small streamer at the time myself, playing with a group that consisted of my viewers and my friends, and seeing this fun game start to slowly fade away reminded me of other old games that I used to love playing that slowly lost relevancy. Games like Happy Wars on the Xbox 360. I thought Among Us was coming to an end. In November of 2022, Among Us VR would release and all of a sudden there was a new wave of Among Us, but in virtual reality, it was an entirely new way to experience the game, now actually being in the shoes of the little space bean. It took all the best parts of Among Us on the flat screen and amplified it. One of the biggest gripes with the original game was that it was hard to communicate emotions over text in a meeting. Among Us VR brought a great feature to the game that completely countered this, proximity chat. We're, you are go we're gonna do a ritual on you now. Oh, oh, okay. Arguably a feature that makes any party game all that more better. With proximity chat and virtual hands, you were able to actually convey emotion and dissect every little thing people said through their mannerisms. Not to mention that you were now in first person, making the game all that more terrifying and addicting to play. Among Us VR genuinely feels like an entirely different game. It's the same gameplay as the original game, but it also feels completely different. And being a bit of a VR enthusiast myself, I of course was incredibly hyped for the game and even streamed it myself. We even saw some of the biggest Among Us content creators and streamers make a return just to check out the new version of Among Us. Things felt like they were looking up again for the game. The optimism would unfortunately not last long however as what happened to the original game would soon happen to the VR version. The game would start slowly seeing a decline in active players once again probably for the same reason too. The game just didn't receive enough new content to stay fresh. It had managed to gain a completely new player base but overall if your game isn't receiving new content then again it'll just become stale over time. Which is a shame because I feel like the VR version really could have made another big impact on the gaming scene, yet its popularity seemed to die off faster than the original game. I will say though that we got some insanely hilarious clips from this version of the game. I'm the imposter! <laughs> <laughs> and for that, I'm happy we could at least see people make the most of the game. I think overall Among Us was a fantastic party game at its best, but with the lack of updates and new content, the necessity of having a good group to play with, the game just began losing players at a rapid pace. And although a lot of content creators continued making videos playing Among Us, modders making some amazing mods for the game, and even memes overtaking the internet, it became a game of the past very quickly. I still think that it has the potential of blowing up again, but they would have to make some big game-changing updates, or possibly Among Us 2. Overall, it was really sad to see Among Us fall off, and I hope one day it makes a return to mainstream media again, at least for the memes. <sighs>Fall Guys was another casual party game that took streaming and content creation by storm. And when all your favorite content creators are playing a game, then you end up playing that game too. I mean, this game had everyone playing it from PewDiePie, Mr. Beast, and Penguin Zero. This game seemingly blew up overnight, very similar to how Among Us felt like it blew up overnight. Between its parkour wipeout style of gameplay and its take on the popular genre of battle royales, the game quickly became everyone's go-to. However, I think Fall Guys fell off for a completely different reason than Among Us. That being being its accessibility. Unlike Among Us, which was available on both PC and mobile, Fall Guys was only available on PlayStation 4 and PC, meaning that it already alienated a lot of the gaming community. This would later have effects on the game's overall growth, as by only having it available on two platforms, it couldn't reach its full potential. Not to mention that this game had a rocky star. The dev team behind Fall Guys, Mediatonic, wasn't anticipating the sheer numbers their game would receive on day one, and so they didn't prepare 
prepare for the influx of players they would get from release. Meaning their servers ended up getting completely overloaded and caused some issues for players to get into the game. But no big deal, that's something they fixed as time went on. But then another issue arrived. With the game being on PC, it didn't take long for the game to be overrun with cheaters and hackers who would use unfair advantages over other players. Some of these cheaters were able to fly or use speed hacks in races to always secure first place. And this is cheaters who made it obvious. Sometimes you would have subtle cheaters who make it very difficult to tell if they're cheating. I am aware that every game has cheaters. It's something that's difficult to avoid as cheating softwares always continue to evolve and become more accessible to players. But with a game like Fall Guys that only has one winner with each game, you can see how cheaters being in the game really ruin people's experiences and put them off the game. It also didn't help that eventually people just became too good at this game and for those who wanted a more casual experience and didn't get time to practice the game, you could see how they would have no fun playing the game either as they would feel like they could never win. And sure, it's just a game, who cares about winning, right? Yeah, it may just be a game, but losing never feels good. And if you lose so many games in a row, eventually you're just gonna find a different game to play where it feels like you have a more fair experience. Then on top of all of that, another competitor would enter the space, which copied the Fall Guys formula. Stumble Guys took everything Fall Guys was good at and made it accessible to more people. And not only having it be completely free, but also having it on mobile. Although Fall Guys was the dominant game of the two for a brief time, it wouldn't take long for Stumble Guys to surpass Fall Guys in popularity. This is because it not only took way too long to get Fall Guys on Xbox and Switch, but also the support of Epic Games to even begin pushing out more content for the game. Meanwhile, Stumble Guys was updating their game often with new content and reaching out to creators for sponsorships. Now, don't get me wrong, I personally dislike Stumble Guys. I've played it myself in the past and I think they have incredibly predatory practices with their shop. As in Stumble Guys, you can buy pay to win emotes, which can be the difference between winning and losing a game. And I think it's a joke that in a battle royale game that is mostly targeted for children with its oversaturated colors, you have pay to win items in your game. I honestly find it incredibly scummy, but hey, that's just most game companies nowadays, especially mobile games, because all that matters is the money bag and not your players, right? I don't mean to rant much, but I just absolutely hate when devs put pay to win features into their game, knowing full well that they're taking advantage of children who play because those kids may feel like they can only win with emotes. It's scummy and there's no excuse for it. Okay, rant over. Again, similar to Among Us, I don't think Fall Guys is dead. I mean, it definitely lost over 90% of its player base when it was at its peak, but I can say for certain that this game isn't dead. It still very much has a player base. Just like Among Us as well, I fully believe this game can make a comeback. They would have to push out way more content for the game to make it feel fresh again and then maintain that, but overall, I think this game can become popular again. I mean, there's a reason it was insanely popular from release, because for a brief time, the game was really fun and addictive to play. It just got stale quickly for people, because games started to feel the same. I would like to say though that they've added a lot more into the game now since I last played when the game first came out. So since it's free on Epic Launcher and they've added more to the game now, I would highly recommend trying it out again if you haven't played it in a while. Oh, there's a landmine. Oh! Oh! Give me him back! Give him back! Give him back! Give him back! He's mine! Lethal Company seems to be the new party game that people are gravitating towards. Not only are some of your favorite streamers and creators playing the game, but the game seems to be able to incorporate all the best features from games we've spoken about already and do it better. For one, the game has a very unique art style that can be shown to pretty much any gamer and they will most likely know the game. And then there are features that are within the game that make it incredibly fun to play. Features like proximity chat, which as I mentioned before, makes pretty much every game much, much better. As hearing your friends screaming down a hallway faintly as they're being attacked by a terrifying creature is the most hilarious thing you can ever witness. Not to mention that people are posting some of the funniest clips whilst playing this game and thus giving the game free advertising to download. I don't, I don't think it's super useful, bro. Yeah. Oh. That's actually how I found out about Lethal Company, and chances are that's how you found out about Lethal Company. But if there is a chance that this is the first time you're hearing about Lethal Company and you have a PC, I highly recommend playing this game with a group of friends, or at least watching some content creators play it. I personally haven't played Lethal Company yet, unfortunately, as I don't really have many online friends who own the game to play. Most of that does derive from the fact that Lethal Company is only available on PC. Hopefully they don't make the same mistake as Fall Guys and they get the game on other platforms as soon 
soon as possible. As I said before, having your game only be on limited platforms is holding its potential back because a lot of people don't own a PC or laptop to play it on. Lethal Company has been great for dishing out new content as well. Not to mention that the game is in VR thanks to modding. I hate to sound like a broken record, but as I said before, I'm a VR enthusiast. So just seeing a game like Lethal Company in VR is so cool. And I'm always so shocked with the amazing features that modders can implement into a game. The fact that you have mods in the game already when it's only been out for a few months is honestly just amazing. I always think that having your game be able to run mods in the first place can instantly improve its longevity because all of a sudden you have all this other content accessible to you. And this has been proven time and time again. Games like Skyrim have such a big modding community, which for reference, by the way, Skyrim is almost 13 years old and the game still has a big following, which just shows how far mods can take a game. It's strange because I feel like we're witnessing the same thing as Among Us. You have this really popular game that people are playing and depending on the choices that the devs make depends on the longevity of the game. I think in order for Lethal Company not to fall off, they would need to keep up with updates, publish the game on other platforms and the biggest thing I can recommend to them, make the game cross-platform. What I've noticed about talking on the subject of party games is that these games do well because they give us, the players, a chance to enjoy games with our friends. Humans need social interaction and having these amazing party games that give you the chance of bonding with friends is what makes these games so addictive. I think with us now being in the year 2024, going forward, party games should be cross-play. It's been done in other games and I know some of these games have small dev teams and it's probably difficult to implement, but having your games be cross-platform just means that friends don't have any restraints to be able to just play and enjoy the games together. Sadly, despite the fun gameplay that Lethal Company has been offering, it seems to be on the decline for player count right now. And again, I do believe that this is because it's not been released on other platforms yet. If the game was accessible on other platforms, it would gain an incredible amount of players because all these people have seen their favorite streamers playing it. And not to mention that there is a lot more gamers on console consoles than PC. If there was a possibility of a game company like Epic Games buying Lethal Company and distributing it across other platforms, similar to what happened with Fall Guys, then there's a chance for this game to remain incredibly popular for even longer. Not to mention that if it is cross-platform like I suggested earlier, friends would be able to play with one another regardless of what platform they're on. To sum everything up, I think we have our answer to the question I asked at the beginning of the video. See, I shouldn't have asked why do games lose relevancy, the real question is why do multiplayer games lose relevancy and to that you could say lack of new content the game becomes stale over time or that once you and your friends stop having fun on the game you stop playing again all games do eventually lose relevancy, but there are chances for games to make a comeback, chances for games to better themselves and serve the player base with great content. We've seen examples of games making comebacks, and although those games may fall under the radar for a while, I believe that players come back to those games because they remember the nostalgia, they remember the memories with friends, they remember having fun. And in a world where video games can be an escape for us, all we want is fun from them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I realise that in parts of this video, I may have come across strongly in my opinions and failed to remain unbiased, but I think that's because these games and this subject means a lot to me, and I find it incredibly interesting to talk about why certain games die off over time. As always, please click on this video next if you want to see more from me, but otherwise, I hope you have a good day. Pine Tree, logging off.